It's time for another layout update. We're going to look at uh, attaching the tracks and finishing up the wiring so we can test her out. So let's get this video started. Southern Rail Fan is the place for amazing videos of all types of trains. Southern Rail Fan, subscribe today. Alrighty, I guess the uh, major thing that I done was got the two halves put together and uh, that took some finagling. I had to use a uh, car jack and uh, jack up one side and of course the car jack didn't go smoothly. Uh, it would move, you know, several uh, inches, uh, not inches, but it'd move a whole lot instead of just being uh, really precision move up and down so it took a little while to get it uh, lined up and then I just took some of these uh, brackets this was a T bracket here and I cut it off uh, but the mistake I made and there's gonna be plenty I guess with this layout is I attached the two sections before I put the track in what I should have done is work that track in uh, and then uh, attached it. So what I done was I removed some cross ties from uh, either the left hand section or the right hand section and slid the, uh, I don't know what these little things are called there where they, they slide over each section of rail. So I'd slide those all the way up to that uh, cross tie there and that would allow me to drop the track in as uh, you can see how close the clearance or tolerance is there. And then I would slide that uh, rail joiner. Yay, that's what it's called. Slide that rail joiner back over and then I'll replace some, uh, some cross ties there. I'll slide some, some uh, cross ties in. Uh, for instance here, uh, I'll just put some cross ties back in there uh, and that's what I'll do for each each section to get that uh, back together. Now on this other side over here, of course there's a re-railer uh, that really helped me line everything up. And that's what I done first is I got this re-railer uh, back together and got it lined up. It doesn't look like it's lined up Maybe if I go overhead now, it looks a little bit better from the side there. It looks like it's not lined up. And we got everything uh, put back together for the wiring underneath. So what happens is you flip that master switch on. And then you can come over here to the... Uh, uh, control panel, I guess you could call it. And it has a switch here. It turns it on and each one of these switches is for a uh, the uh, tortoise switch machine underneath and uh, for instance this switch here goes to that switch so if I throw that switch it moves the switch over and it lights up green here to uh, notify that it's it's uh, lined up for the green side. Uh, so if I look over here, it's lined up to go out that track there. And on the panel here, that track is green. Now this straight section is red. So if we flip the switch back it lines that switch up and turns the LED red for this line here so it, it's really cool how they've got this thing uh, built uh, one of our subscribers told me what this was and this is a uh, programming module I guess you could call it a module uh, I couldn't figure out what was going on. This is a little homemade box that it sits in. Get those wires down in there. And that cap goes over the top of it. 
and this switch is for run to run the trains or you flip it over to P and this section here turns into a programming track and that is a Digitrax like BP 1100 or BP 100 or something like that's what that that is and down here about fell down that is showing an error right now but that is the controller for the DCC uh, turntable there so that's pretty cool like that alrighty I will uh, put up a light here underneath the layout and get the creeper and <laughs> we'll creep underneath this and I'll show you some of the uh, the wire and it's uh, underneath the layout Okie dokie, we're underneath the, uh, the layout. And for the power switches, uh, this just uses an old uh, power supply like would come with a uh, train set. And the control panel is uh, using that power supply there. That right there is a auto reverser and then you see the buses uh, for the power to each section of track there's a couple of those uh, uh, slow motion tortoise switch machines those are awesome here is uh, another set of buses that uh, plug right there is how the two sections are wired together. And there is one of the computer type plugs moving over to that control panel that goes up here to this bus here is for the switch machines. And to move on over there, there are some more of those switch machines over on that side. Now, each section of track has the NMRA uh, red and white uh, power wire runs through it, and that's the round uh, section here of the turntable. And this cable here is the uh, I think it's cat six or something like that. I forget what they're called. It's like a cable that runs over to plug into that controller for the turntable. This is a uh, DCC uh, Digitrax plug. That is an accessory light for either the uh, turntable or one of the buildings up there for that so that is the wiring on the bottom side okie doke I keep saying okie doke a lot okie doke uh, what I've got left to do is I've got to take this section of bridge out and I think what I'm going to do is get up on uh, like a step ladder to where I can maybe put one hand here and kind of lean over and get that section of track put in so I can test and uh, and run all this other stuff. Like I said, I don't want to do any expansion on it until I make sure all this stuff uh, works. I'm going to get a uh, Digitrax uh, DCC system. I mean, it'd be just as simple to, to use something that I've already got uh, because of the wiring, it just runs out to right there. And, uh, you know, that's power and uh, programming. Uh, I'm not sure what that other yellow and gray wire is. I didn't get that one as far as get that figured out. But that way I can get it together and start uh, doing some running. I'm just going to use it kind of like a little switch layout to begin with. I'm going to tie this track in 
to this track. Same thing on the other side that will make that loop to where we can run around and uh, get to enjoying it. Start doing a little bit of scenery with it. And uh, it, it really, it's a learning process for me. It's probably boring you guys or, or some of you guys that are like me just starting out. Uh, maybe it'll help these video, this video and, and the, the future videos will help you out a little bit. Just same thing with me. I, I mean, I got on YouTube and started looking at how people had their layouts wired up. That way I could figure out kind of what was going on with that wiring menagerie that was underneath this layout. And it looked daunting to begin with. I thought, holy cow, how am I gonna figure out what this person did? And come to find out, it a lot of it, 99% of it follows the NMRA suggestions, even to the color of the wires. And that's something I didn't know about. I didn't know those uh, uh, suggested or requirements I don't guess they're called requirements, but uh, those suggestions by the NMRA even existed. So that helped out a whole lot. Maybe this will too. So uh, we'll uh, keep following up. Hopefully, I said this last video, but hopefully by this weekend, I'll be able to, uh, to run some trains. Uh, it's just my lack of knowledge that I thought I'd be able to run some last weekend, but I didn't realize it was going to take me a little bit longer to... Uh, to figure out where I was at, what I was needing to do, and a, and a game plan for, for what was going on. It's just like how this was mounted. It took me a little while to figure out uh, what the person had in mind to, uh, to get all that stuff going. Thanks to uh, you know having the YouTube channel, I was able to figure out what that uh, piece of equipment was there. So it's all a benefit. Okie doke, thank you guys so much, and we'll see you on the next one.